I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we set up a mob farm, and well, we get some thrust. Oh, mob farms. That's right, today we're going to be getting into some mob farms, and also some other means of transportation that's going to be really nice. Now, getting into a mob farm, this is going to be basically my ultimate setup guide for setting up a very easy mob farm in this pack, and... It doesn't take too much to get into, and you don't even need to go to the nether in order to do it. Now, most of the time when using this mod here, Mob Grinding Utils, which is like a fundamental mob uh, farm mod and has been in many, many packs. Um, when using this, normally you have to go to the nether first. Uh, and the reason is because the absorption hopper that picks up experience for you requires an eye of ender and to even get the actual mob eggs that you need to make the farm to make the cursed earth and delightful dirt, um, you need a bucket of essence. And to do this, normally you would make an XP singularity drain. This requires Eyes of Ender, which requires you to go to the nether. But in this pack, we can actually avoid that by using the experience crystal. Now, this is actually in the helpful tips, and you can get a bottle of enchanting very easy by simply just getting yourself a brewing stand, which you can find in villages, and you can go ahead and level it up until you get it to master, and you can get yourself some enchanting bottles. That's pretty straightforward, and that's what I did. Now, this thing is pretty cool, because we can place it down, and then we can feed it levels. But another cool thing is it can also collect experience, which is going to be very helpful, considering we still haven't gone to the nether yet, which means we can't also make that absorption hopper. However, we do have access to enderpearls, and we have access to other means of collecting items. So in reality, our mob farm should be pretty straightforward to set up. So long as we, well, set all of the collection stuff up. Now, last episode, we also set up charcoal automation, which is going to be really handy considering I want to make tinted glass. I want this whole thing to be surrounded by tinted glass. Um, and to do that, we are going to need plenty of charcoal. Um, this whole outer area, this right here, is going to be filled in with tinted glass. And I'm leaving a single block space here for one particular reason. Mobs in this mod have a weird time when they spawn. They can spawn right on the edge, meaning they can get stuck inside of a block if it is placed right here. And that poses a little bit of a problem, specifically with slimes. Um, we may still encounter this problem. Uh, hopefully we can find a solution to it. Uh, but with it being one block out, I'm hoping that slimes specifically, uh, they won't have a problem spawning around on the edge and, and potentially getting out of the farm. Uh, everything is going to be pushed into a corner, it's going to be killed, and then something is going to collect these items. So that's why I have it set up this way. And by default, the eggs produce a 5x5 five five area of either delightful dirt or cursed earth. By the way, I did want to mention while I'm setting this farm up, thank you guys, by the way, so much for all the supportive comments and suggestions. Like, I do take all of those to heart, and I do utilize tons of suggestions that you guys give me in the comments in future episodes. Uh, it's the way I learn, so keep suggesting. I appreciate it. All right, so I know you're excited to see all of the mobs spawning in here and them being annihilated, but we do need to talk about a couple of things first. So the way we're going to kill the mobs is with a mob masher. The way we're going to collect the items is with a basic item collector that just requires a normal ender pearl. Now the advanced version, which can't pick up or which can pick up as far and has more filters, that one does require a eye of ender, but this one does not. Uh, and then for XP collection, we're just going to use this, the experience crystal, but we're gonna get to that here in just a moment. So how am I gonna set up the actual mob farm and make sure that we're pushing the mobs into our mob masher? Well, that's where we're gonna use a mob fan. And I think I can get away with just using two mob fans in the setup. Yes, I know. And they're gonna go in this direction like so. So if I go ahead and show area, we can see that this is going to go out here, but I want my, I want my crusher, my mob masher to be here. And I want to kill them in the corner over here. That's ultimately where I want this to go. It's going to make it a little bit easier to, to, to use our mob fans in this way. Um, so now that I have this set up, I basically need some upgrades. So that's where this width upgrade is going to make it a little bit wider. I actually need one more width upgrade, it does seem. And I also need one range. So one distance upgrade for each one of these. And then once I have that, then we should be good. So uh, I just need to get one more range, and then we'll notice this is going to push the mobs this way, and even if they're here, they're gonna get pushed into this uh, this mob masher, and over here, they're gonna get pushed as well, and uh, this should flow perfectly, and we'll get, we get away with literally two mob fans. 
Perfect. After getting that upgrade in, we're ready to go. And how does this work? Well, we need levers in order to activate it or some sort of redstone signal. Um, I like levers because levers allow me to turn them on and off. Whereas if I put a block of redstone underneath them, um, we wouldn't have as much control. Uh, however, I do, I, th I think I want to put um, a block of redstone underneath the mob masher. Uh, but let's go ahead and try this. So we put, we give this a redstone signal that's going to push the mobs and we're going to test with ourselves. Uh, thankfully, my mob farm's not on, so we don't have to worry about that. But if I walk in here, notice I'm going to get pushed. No matter where I go, I'm going to get pushed. Now, the problem with this is you can't hold shift to get through these. These are really strong. So we are going to have to break through. But that just means our mobs are not going to have any problems um, with this. So we can also turn everything off. And I'm going to go ahead and hide the area. You don't have to see all of that. Perfect. So now the only thing left to do, now that we know... Our mobs are going to get annihilated once we get this up and running. All I got to do is turn this on. And I'm just going to place it on a block of redstone. And that just turns the mob mesher on. Now, this has a ton of upgrades itself that can kill the mobs faster, which will be really nice later on. But for right now, we almost have everything ready to go. Now, we just need to make the material that converts this dirt into a mob spawning material. Now, just before we get these mobs spawning in, let's also get a kill switch set up. So I want to add some redstone here and I want a lever to be able to pull that turns on these redstone lamps that I want lining all four corners of this. Um, so all I really need is some redstone that just runs underneath the dirt. And we just have a lever that is simply out here that can be turned on that will trigger the redstone to turn these lamps on. Now, normally redstone like this would require a little bit more of a complicated setup, but as you see right here, I have my redstone that is being sent through this line. And what I want to do is actually power these lamps. So normally I'd have to power a block of some sort, um, which would work. Like having a, a powered block right here will ignite these. But I would have to use a little bit more here uh, in order to get this to work because the redstone doesn't pass through. So instead, what I can use is this cog block from supplementaries. This is a really cool block. Notice that the redstone signal is actually sent through the block, but also powers the block. And another cool thing is these blocks can go up so it can carry redstone signals vertically without any hassle, which is, and it can also go down, which is another thing. So going up with a redstone, always kind of tedious and going down with redstone is always kind of tedious, but not with the cog blocks. It makes it so much easier. Probably one of my favorite modded redstone items. Now, as far as item collection and XP collection goes, I'm hoping that this will collect the XP through the walls. We might end up with a problem there. I still don't know just yet, but we'll be going to the nether very soon anyways. And then this right here, as you see right here, we can actually adjust this and modify it, shrink it down, move it, um, increase the range up to five by five. I think where it's at is pretty good. And we can actually toggle on and we can see the range. That is, that is plenty of range on that block. All right, so now for the fun part. <laughs> we get to actually turn this thing on and we get to collect the experience and to get the block that actually converts the dirt. I shouldn't enjoy this part as much as I do, but it's actually quite hilarious. So all we need to do now is store all of our levels and then we'll use our buckets to pick up four buckets of this essence. And then we're gonna use that to craft up cursed chicken feed. And there we go. So all of those buckets are now used to make the chicken feed. And well, the chicken feed is used for <laughs> feeding chickens. So let's do that. So here we go. I now have a chicken and we just simply right click and it's gone. <laughs> oh no. Uh, yes, that is an exploding chicken, but it does give us a very useful item. I will take it. It's definitely worth the sacrifice. <laughs> that one lonely chicken, it probably would have fallen into a hole anyways. Um, so. All we have to do now is just right click here and that is now dreadful dirt. Now, because of the light, we shouldn't get any spawns inside of here. But as soon as I turn this off, mobs should very easily start spawning just like that. And then we just need to turn on our fans. And these mobs are going to have a really fun time over in the mob crusher. And we have a successful mob farm. Like I said, I don't know if the experience gets picked up. It doesn't really look like it's picking up the experience. It would if the experience could get to it, but that is definitely one of the drawbacks, I think. Um, now, I believe if we have a magnet, we can actually collect the XP. 
And I did get a magnet from a quest reward, believe it or not. We ended up getting an advanced magnet specifically from the quest reward. Um, and so I think this has some options. We can, I think, turn off item pickup, but turn on experience pickup. And if we have this equipped, um, we should be able to set a hotkey to toggle it on and off. But I think experience pickup is, is really nice. Um, and this just goes in our regular charm slot, which is this right here. So if we put that in, we can always walk up to this and collect the experience, supposedly, once it's on. Oh my goodness, and there's all kinds of mobs in here. There we go, we'll turn it on, and now you see we're collecting the experience. This is temporary because we will get an actual absorption hopper set up as soon as we go to the nether. Now there is one other thing that I wanna preface when setting up this mob farm. You might want to set up a way of blocking the sounds that this makes. So to do that, we can actually do something very cool. These numbers up here actually are assigned to locations and we can anchor very specific uh, locations to block the sounds from. So if we go to recent, which is right here, we can actually turn down all of these like hurt sounds. So all of these hurt mob sounds, we can disable them right here. And these are the ones that are really, really annoying are the hurt sounds and also the death sounds we can also get rid of but we'll probably want to toggle all of these and these are all going to be assigned specifically to this location. So definitely want to get rid of these. Honestly, just searching anything entity and blocking the sound from it is probably the best thing to do as well. Just everything entity wise in this location. Um, now we can actually edit this. So we can, we should be able to edit the anchor here and we can change the radius to be like, I don't know, eight blocks um, just to make sure that we don't hear the sound. Uh, maybe, yeah, eight, eight sounds like a pretty good number. If it's not enough, we can always change it from there. Now, there are still a lot of modifications that we can actually make after we venture into the nether, which is going to open up a ton of stuff. Um, also, I'm noticing the items are not going in here because that barrel is completely full. We're going to talk, we're going to fix this here in a second. Um, but yes, Enderman teleporting around might become a problem. That is something that we can fix with an Ender inhibitor, but this is going to require blaze. Now to fix that barrel, we should be able to take a basic tier right here and we should be able to upgrade. Now I think there are basic two uh, upgraded tiers, but we do need at least a basic upgrade. That's gonna require a redstone torch. This is how you actually convert these barrels into sophisticated storage, which is an incredibly powerful storage mod. Don't let it fool you by its simple looks. It is quite the mod. So let's see, can we just upgrade directly to this? So this is a basic to that tier. So let's go ahead and just simply upgrade all of the redstone. There we go. Thankfully, I have tons of redstone. Now with this upgrade, I believe we can just simply right click it. We don't even need the basic tier. And this just opens the storage up a ton. So now we have tons of space inside of here. But this gets even crazier because we should be able to also add upgrades to the slots, which is going to mean one individual slot can hold more than one stack of item. Oh, and also you could use a magnet upgrade to collect the items directly into the uh, barrel as well. Um, this is one of the upgrades, but I wanted to save my upgrade slots for this particular thing. We can make upgrades right here. This requires basic upgrades, but once we have these basic upgrades, we need logs. Once we have these all set up, we should have tons of storage, like uh, more than we'll know what to do with, right? Um, and these are multiplicative, by the way. So it says right here, multiplies the number of stacks that can fit. And this is by two, just with the first upgrade. So what is that going to mean for three upgrades? Uh, maybe three upgrades that go all the way to, let's say, let's just do iron for right now. Cause you know, that's, that's going to be a good number. So we'll do three that are like this. And then let's just put iron upgrades in there. We have plenty of iron. It's, it's basically free to us at this point. So setting up iron upgrades one two three this should be if we do the math four times four times four um and then that will be the number of slots that we have so if done correctly this should equate to 64 stacks of items that it can hold per slot yes you heard that right 64 stacks of items now some of these items are going to be a bit of a pain like these uh, scrolls that are going to build up um but really getting ender pearls is really what i want and this is so nice that we get to farm these. Perfect. Now with this mob farm set up and ready to go, we need to prep ourselves for actually going to the nether. And I think one of the best things for us is to make a jetpack. 
Now, even though we can make ourselves a jetpack, we still need a way to charge it. Um, and at the moment, I think one of the best ways is using Dyer's charging gadgets. Um, this is a very simple block that you feed it fuel and it builds up power. Uh, just a little bit of power. And this is a nice way of charging early game uh, when you have really no other method. Um, it doesn't generate a whole lot of power, uh, but it will stack up to a million FE, um, which is more than enough to like put something in here, throw some fuel in and let it build up. Later on, we'll have much better options, even wireless charging, which will be really, really nice with the power mod. But for right now, this is probably the, the highest tier I'm gonna go up to today. I think getting up to a gold jetpack is going to be more than enough, and these are kind of expensive. So bear in mind, you're gonna need iron and you need tons of redstone. So I'm so glad that I found that redstone vein because we have tons of redstone now. Um, so this is why that Greg Tech ore may be a thing for you, uh, even though, even if you don't wanna get into Greg Tech, mining those Greg Tech ores, and they're pretty potent. Now, just some quick math, just to sort of help you along if you're wondering how many. For each one of these jetpacks, you're gonna need two thrusters and a wood a wooden capacitor, not a wooden capacitor, but a capacitor. So two thrusters and a capacitor. Um, and these are gonna require basic coils or coils of some kind. And in each jetpack, there should be 11 coils because each thruster is going to have three basics. And then we have one inside of the cell. And then this contains three cells. So in total, that should be eight and then 11. So eight, 19, 11, perfect. So 11 is how many of these coils I will need to make in order to get started with this. And you'll also need to convert those coils into five of these energy cells. Altogether, those things combined will get us a jetpack, and these jetpacks are very, very convenient. So now we've made it to copper tier, and then to get to gold tier, to get through the technically tier three, we're gonna need to switch up to advanced coils, which then use gold, and it's the same number. So just like this, we should now have ourselves a golden jetpack. Um, so there's a lot of hotkeys for these. So let me go ahead and toss this in here and I need to get to configuring the hotkeys for these because we should be able to control being able to turn it on. We should be able to control turning uh, the hover mode on and also to be able to control the throttle to make it go faster or slower. Now my jetpack should be ready to go and we should be able to now equip it and I have all the hotkeys set up. We also got a, a friend over here that we want to check. Uh, but first of all, Let's go ahead and test out how we use this. Now, by default, V is how we turn the engines on and off. So sometimes you may want to turn off the engine so you don't actually jump. And so V is the key for that by default. And H is the key to toggle on and off hover mode, um, which can be kind of important. I do like hover mode. <laughs> it is kind of important sometimes. Um, and it allows you to kind of create a vish flight, uh, even though you do continue to fall down, uh, except for the, the max tier. It is basically create a flight. But I set my throttle keys by default. Uh, I think they are comma and period key, uh, but I set it to my up and down arrow keys so I can turn it up and down. And I think that's gonna be really handy, specifically for times when we don't wanna go as fast. Like by default, this is how fast. When we turn the throttle down, that feels a bit better, right? We turn it all the way up, well, then we're just soaring, um, which can be kind of crazy <laughs> to fly around that fast. Uh, we also consume in this particular tier, 300 RF per tick, which in my opinion is quite a lot. Um, so we'll have to keep an eye out on how much power we actually consume, even though we have 4 million, that will drain very fast, um, specifically if we're in hover mode. Um, so that is pretty cool. Now I do wanna to go to the nether, I think. I think we have everything ready to go to sort of take on the nether. We have some fire resist potions in our inventory and everything. And believe it or not, this guy just showed up and wouldn't you know it, this is giving a fire warding ring from Iron Spells and Spellbook, and it says grants fire immunity for 23 emeralds. <laughs> what, what are you even doing? This guy shows up just in time for the show. Um, it looks like I'm gonna need some logs and sticks to do some trading, but I should be able to get them. Um, and we should be able to get plenty of emeralds. Oh man, this is this is amazing. So sometimes these guys are handy, as you can see here. Oh, oh, hey. Don't walk away. Look at that. I wonder if this is like, what kind of fire immunity is this? Like, is it like just pure fire immunity? Like, are we are we not gonna need these fire resist potions? <laughs> is this that powerful? Now let's do this. All I need is a flint and still that should complete the quest, I do believe, right here. And all we have to do is enter the portal and we get access to all of this branching stuff in our quest line, like tons of stuff. 
including Orsite potions, which are just insanity, by the way. Yes, it is basically X-Ray. I cannot wait to dabble in that a little bit. Ah, oh, but there's so much more, including Ancient Debris, which is going to lead us into all the Modium Ore and a little bit more adventuring. So I decided to put my portal inside of this uh, little spire that's over here. And all we have to do is enter it. And I hope we have a good spawn. I can only imagine. I do have fire resist potions just in case. Our gear is not the greatest in the world, but with our shield, uh, we should be pretty tough. We should be some pretty tough component or opponents. And uh, I should now have this. Also, I decided to just use some logs and there's a rapid hopper. That's an incredibly fast hopper that I found. That was really, really cool. We're probably gonna be using those more often, uh, but there we go. So now we have access to this. I'm gonna turn the throttle down quite a bit. I don't actually know if the throttle, like still, like if it lowers the amount of, uh, of energy we use. That'd be kind of cool to know. All right, time to go in. Let's go ahead and hope we get a good spawn. <laughs> oh boy. All right, things are loading in and this could not be a worse spawn. And I'm so glad that I have a jetpack because this is horrible. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? I don't even know. So good thing we can actually see somewhat of the map. It looks like there's some underground stuff here or something here in the map, uh, which is kind of cool. But the best way to go about this is to simply fly around and see what we can find. We're definitely looking for a fortress. Ooh, there is, oh, Extreme Reactors is in here. Okay, nice. We need a lot of quartz, so I definitely want to look at quartz. There's some solium ore, and that looks like more ore. So there's like other ores in this dimension as well. So there's 10. So we do have nether ores. Oh, that's kind of nice. So there we go. So we can actually farm ores while we're here too. I'll just be taking a bunch of this. And this material right here is used in our tools. So we could actually upgrade our tools with some of this new material that we found in this dimension. So another little nice tip that you may want to know is you do have access to two different types of maps. So we have journey maps, which in my opinion can be kind of rough to see certain things that appear on the map, uh, but we do have access to FTB maps as well. And this map uh, lets you, in my opinion, see where these things are at a little bit better. Now notice these guys. Well, not specifically these guys, but the ones that you trade gold with, which I think there are some over here, uh, AKA cross bros. Um, they, these, <laughs> they will attack you if you're not wearing gold. Well, thankfully, because of my backpack being gold, they actually don't mess with me either. Um, so just having your backpack at gold level is more than enough to prevent them from messing with you. Also with that ring, we are entirely fire immune. And if you're wondering where I got these fire resistant potions, you can actually find them in the loot chests underground in, uh, just throughout your normal mining. Oh no, there are some lays over here that are trapped. No, poor Lays. Oh, I bet these guys... Oh, they're keeping you trapped in here. These poor Lays. I don't want to let them out, though, because... Uh, I, where are you going to go? But is there loot in here? There's got to be loot. Oh, already. Look, I did notice this. So they're not really messing with me here, which is good. Good, good, good. But wart. Yes. And I will take this soul sand. That is really nice. So we now have wart without even finding a fortress. I mean, normally that would be great for potions. Wondering, is there anything else in here? Any chests that have really good loot? I know as soon as I open a chest, they are going to attack me, which is the downside to opening a chest here. Oh, this guy's already after me, but I should be able to maybe loot this. Oh, I can. Yes, they are all mad at me. We get netherite scrap. So, I mean, our looting adventure only extends even further now because we have access here. Yes, this is a little cheesy doing it this way, but hey, it is what it is, right? Oh, we ended up getting, what is this? Self summon steed extend time from Ars Elemental. Oh, that'll summon a horse for us? That's a really nice book to have. Another thing we got from that was this ancient soul or scroll of true sight. And apparently we should be able to activate this and it gives us like night vision and the ability to see in the fog for 10 minutes or even underwater. That's pretty cool. So now we basically have night vision. <laughs> I don't know if that's a benefit in the nether as it gets really bright here. You know, the nice part about having a jetpack is well, 
get wrecked. <laughs> and we can just easily do that. Look at that, we got two gas tiers from that. By the way, I did take all of my enchanting books and I put capturing two scav, uh, the looting and the severing on here. All of those were the loot books that we had or enchanted books that we had in our inventory. I'm not even hunting for it and I managed to find vibranium. Come on, throw a fireball. Oh, there's two of them. Come on, I'm trying to hit them back. All right, it's best if I just, if I just do, oh, there we go. We got the return to cinder. <laughs> that was an easy one though. But yes, I ended up finding, look at this. This is vibranium right there, right there. It's, we can't mine it though. Uh, we'd have to have an all the modium pickaxe to be able to mine vibranium. Oh yes, it's my favorite biome. It's disturbing, I know. I I don't know, it's just something about this biome. I think it's, oh yes, that, it's definitely that. It's the popping of the nodules. I, I don't like the hair that's sticking out or the blood that's everywhere or any of that, but I really like these nodules that you can pop. Oh, it's so satisfying to walk on. I think I found it. Yes. And it doesn't look like any normal fortress. It looks different. And I'm excited to be able to explore this. Oh, yes. A terrible fortress. But before we can explore this, we're going to have to wait until next episode. That's right. I do have a way to get back home. So I am going to be placing down a waystone so we can get back. Ah, but next episode, we are going to be exploring this entirely. And I hope to be able to loot everything. So until then, be sure to click that subscribe button. And leave a comment down in the comment section below, letting me know what mod I should definitely dive into, as I really appreciate all of you guys' suggestions. If there's something incredibly powerful that you guys know about that I don't, let me know, as I would love the tip so I can share it with more people. And guys, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that amazing thanks is going to go out to... Nikki, thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. And guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord, it's linked down in the description below, or you can go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing crew today. Thank you all so very much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.